Good morning. Today's topic is rational of endonautics. So today we will be discussing about uh, theories of spread of infection, culprit of endonautic pathology, which include microorganism and portals uh, for entry of microorganism, then inflammation in cells involved in inflammation, then various uh, response of inflammatory cells to periapical lesion, then antibodies and role of immunity in uh, endodontics, then about Fritsch study, Kronfeld's mountain pass theory and conclusion. So coming to the introduction, endodontic pathology is mainly caused uh, by an injury to tooth, which can be physical, chemical, uh, or bacterial. And this injury can cause reversible or irreversible changes to pulp and periradicular tissues. And this changes depends on the intensity, duration, pathogenicity of stimulus and host defense mechanism. And uh, rational of anodontic therapy is complete debridement of the root canal system, followed by three-dimensional obturation of the root canal system. So there are various theories which explains the spread of infection. And it includes focal infection and Foci or focus of infection. So focal infection, it is localized or generalized infection caused by dissemination of microorganism or toxic products from a focus of infection. So focus of infection, this is a circumscribed area of tissue which is infected with exogenous pathogenic microorganism and is usually located near a mucus or cutaneous surface. And there are various uh, foci of infection which are present in our oral cavity, which includes infected periapical lesions, which also includes granuloma, abscess, cyst. Then second one is teeth with infected root canal system. Third one is periodontal disease, which is indicated for extraction. Then culprit of anodontic pathology. So this culprit of anodontic pathology, this study was conducted by Kakahashi in 1965. And this explains that bacteria or microorganisms are the culprit of anodontic pathology. So root canal infections are multibacterial in nature. So this was, that was a classical study done by Takahashi. Now coming to the portals of entry of microorganisms, there are various portals through which microorganism can enter into the root canal. It includes through dental caries, mechanical or traumatic injury, then gingival sulcus, then periodontium, and through bloodstream. So through all this uh, way, bacteria can enter to the root canal system. Then anachorosis it refers to the attraction of blood-borne bacteria in the areas of inflammation and it is a process by which microorganisms are transported in the blood to an area of inflammation where they establish an infection. It is again a portal of entry. So coming to inflammation. So inflammation is defined as uh, the local response of living mammalian tissue to injury due to any agent. And we all know about the signs of inflammation which includes rubber, calor, tumor, dollar and fifth one is a loss of function. So this is uh, this picture shows the inflammatory response to periapical lesion, which includes cells uh, like neutrophils, lymphocytes, macrophages, osteoclasts, etc. And antibodies are also involved in this reaction. And there are various invaders, that is mixed microflora also will be present. And there are also molecular mediators. And uh, broadly, we can classify inflammation to two types, which is acute and chronic. Acute inflammation, um, it includes more of PMNLs, that is neutrophils and macrophages. And chronic inflammation cells will be predominantly uh, in lymphocytes, plasma cells, macrophages, etc. So in an infected canal, the microbes usually remain in the canal. Post-defense mechanism cannot completely remove bacteria and resulting in inflammatory response in the periapical region. So in uh, inflammation, uh, two types of changes can occur following inflammation, which includes degenerative changes and proliferative changes. And degenerative changes can include fibrous changes, resorptive changes, calcified changes, and separation. Whereas proliferative changes, the, their irritants uh, are mild and act as stimulant. So in the inflamed area, the irritant may, uh, may be strong enough to produce degeneration or destruction. And the principal cells of proliferation uh, or repair are the fibroblast. Now coming to the inflammatory cells. So inflammatory cells include predominantly neutrophils, PMNLs, basophils, eosinophils. All this comes under granulocytes. And this neutrophils uh, reach the injury site within 24 hours and they phagocyte bacteria and cellular debris. And in presence of low pH, these neutrophils die and release proteolytic enzymes, prostaglandins and leukotrins. So this breaks down tissue leading to abscess formation. So next kind of cell is macrophages. Uh, they remain in sight for longer time, uh, which is two months.
So this macrophages, uh, the main function of macrophages uh, include phagocytosis, phenocytosis, they secrete lysosomal enzymes, then complement protein and prostaglandin secretion. They provide antigen to immunocomplement cells and they act as scavenger for the dead cells and they produce multinucleated giant cells. Coming to the next group of cells. Lymphocytes. So this lymphocytes group include T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Then osteoclast, uh, they are cells uh, which causes demineralization, dissolution of organic matrix, and finally bone resorption. So in case of apical periodontitis, they proliferate and fuse on stimulation by cytokines and other mediators to form osteoclast. Next group of cells are epithelial cells. Cytokines and other mediators stimulate the dormant cells of rest of malices and results in inflammatory Hyper, hyperplasia. An inflammatory response to periapical lesion, this uh, mediators can be derived into, uh, classified into cell derived, then there are non specific mediators, then uh, plasma derived and extracellular matrix derived mediators. In cell derived, uh, we have neutropeptides, arachidonic acid derivative, cytokines, lysosomal enzyme, PAF or platelet activating factor, vasoactive amines, and prostaglandins. So, all these are the cell derived mediators for inflammation. So these are leukotrienes. Uh, leukotriene basically, uh, it is of different types. Uh, this leukotriene C4, they causes bronchoconstriction, vasoconstriction, smooth muscle construction. They also increase vascular permeability, whereas leukotriene B4, they cause chemotactic cell adherence. Then plasma-derived mediators include fibrinolytic system, complement system, and kinin system. Then extracellular matrix-derived mediators include effector molecules. So all these are the plasma-derived mediators, which increase permeability. In kinin system, which includes uh, pelicrin, kinogen, bradykinin, then all this cause, bradykinin can, can cause increased vascular permeability, smooth muscle contraction, and pain. Then cell derived mediators, neuropeptides, which, uh, sub, which include substance P and calcitonin. Then eicosanoids form prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Then leukotrienes produce by the activation of lip lipooxygenase pathway of arachidonic acid. Cyto, uh, cytokines, they cause development and perpetuation of periodical lesions. There are two types, pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemotactic agents. Then uh, interleukin 1 beta and TNF, that is tumor necrosis factor alpha, are predominant in periodical inflammation. And TNF alpha is seen in root canal exudates and in case of chronic apical lesions. Lysosomal enzymes, alkaline phosphatase peroxidases and collagenases, increases vascular permeability. They cause activation of complement system and bradykinin formation. There is platelet activating factor. They are released from IgE. Increases vascular permeability, chemotax adhesion of leukocytes to endothelium. And vasoactive amines like histamine and serotonin increase uh, the permeability of the tissue and cause vasodilation. Plasma derived mediators that they include fibrinolytic system, complement system, kinin system. The fibrinolytic system causes increased permeability and leukocytic chemotaxis, whereas complement system. They also cause uh, this tissue destruction and they also cause uh, swelling and pain. Kinin system, they cause smooth muscle contraction, vasodilation, increase in vascular permeability. Then antibodies. Polyclonal antibodies include IgM and IgG, whereas monoclonal antibodies form antigen antibody complex and bind to platelets. Then in acute abscess, complexes enter into the systemic circulation. In chronic lesion, complexes are confined to the particular lesion, within the lesion. Then role of immunity in endodontics. There are basically two types of immunity, which includes innate immunity and acute immunity. Innate immunity consists of cells and molecular elements, which act as barrier to prevent bacteria into underlying connective tissue. Acute immunity release of specific receptor molecules by lymphocytes, which recognize and bind to foreign antigen. Then next, coming to endodontic implication, that is pathogenesis of apical periodontitis. This uh, study was done by Fish in 1930, so it is also known as Fish study. And in the study, he has uh, described about four zones, four zones which are present in periradicular tissue. So this uh, describes the reaction of periradicular tissues to bacterial products, noxious products of tissue necrosis and antigenic agents from root canals. So this theory explains about the zones of infection, uh, which are not an infection by themselves, but the, it is a reaction of body to the infection. So there are four well-described zones, that, are, that is zone of infection or necrosis, zone of contamination, zone of irritation, and final zone is a, fourth one is a zone of stimulation. 
The first zone is zone of infection. So this is a first zone, which is very close to the root canal, zone of infection. So infection is confined to the center of lesion and it is characterized by the presence of PMNLs. Abundance of PMNLs will be there and abundance of microorganisms also will be there. And necrotic cells and destruction of components from phagocytes also can be seen. So this is the first zone, which is very close to the root canal system and this, uh, there, there will be predominant of PMNLs and bacteria. So coming to the second zone, which is uh, described in the blue color, light blue color, that is the zone of contamination, which is located next to the zone of infection. And there will be area of cellular destruction, but there won't be any bacteria. No bacterial uh, can be seen. The bacterial presence are absent. And destruction due to toxins released from central zone can be seen. And this zone is uh, characterized by round cells. Whereas in first zone, we have seen more of PMLs, but in this, this zone, there will be more of round cells, osteocyte necrosis, and empty lacuna will be seen. The lymphocytes also will be prevalent in the second zone, the zone of contamination. Now coming to the third zone, which is zone of irritation. So this is a zone away from the central lesion, and this zone is characterized by macrophages, histiocytes, and osteoclasts. And histologically, this zone looks more like a preparation to repair. And fourth one is a zone of stimulation, which is a peripheral zone, and toxins here act as stimulant. And so um, uh, this since it is a peripheral zone, it will be more characterized by fibroblasts and osteoblasts. So fibroblasts will secrete more of collagen and osteoblasts will secrete new bond. So this is a, a like of a stimulation zone. And here toxins will act as stimulant. That is repair will take place. Then microorganism from root canal proliferate to grow out of the root canal. And metabolic byproducts or toxic products uh, get diffused in the periradicular tissue. And if microorganisms are highly virulent, they can develop into periradicular lesion and there can be formation of pus. And finally, it results in the formation of a chronic abscess. Now, coming to the next theory, which was described by Kronfeld, it is known as Kronfeld's mountain pass theory because uh, this Kronfeld has described the periapical region to a battle, battle uh, field. So this uh, Kronfeld explained that granulomas provide an, un uh, an unfavorable environment for bacterial survival. So he employed fish concept to explain this tissue reaction. So this is the theory which was explained by Kronfeld, which is known as Kronfeld's mountain pass theory. And here there are three zones, zone A, B, C. So uh, this Kronfeld ha has uh, what compared the periapical region to a battlefield. So the zone A, this root canal, inside the root canal is a zone A. So there will be bacteria. So this bacteria, he has compared his bacteria to invaders uh, who are always, who always tries to hide in an inaccessible area. So this root canal is uh, compared to an inaccessible mountain and the foramina as mountain pass. So zone A is more of bacteria, which, which is compared to invaders. Whereas zone B, it is an army defend, defending the bacteria. That is army against the invaders. So the proliferative tissue of granuloma represents an army defending the periapical region from the bacteria. So that arrow mark, zone B is a, a army against the invaders. That is against zone A. And when a few bacteria enter, it is destroyed by leukocytes. And this results in major battle analogous to acute inflammation. This is how he compared the periapical region to a battlefield. Now coming to the zone C, it is complete elimination of bacteria from the mountainous entrenchment, that is root canal, will result in elimination of defense forces and planes. So this is the Kronfeld's mountain pass theory, which includes zone A, zone B, and zone C. So uh, rational of aeronautic therapy. So to conclude, rational of aeronautic therapy relates on the fact that non-vital pulp being avascular has no defense mechanism. And the breakdown products from damaged tissue diffuses into the surrounding tissue, leading to periapical irritation. And endodontic therapy seals the root canal system by three dimensions. That is three dimensions. After cleaning and shaping, we will three dimensionally seal the root canal and prevent the percolation of toxic byproducts into the periapical region. And uh, endodontic therapy includes basically two, two treatments that is, endodontic uh, non surgical therapy and surgical endodontic therapy. In non surgical endodontic therapy, it includes three phases access opening or access preparation, then cleaning and shaping, then obturation of the three dimensional obturation of the, obturation of the root canal system. So, this is a non surgical treatment. Whereas in surgical endodontic treatment, it involves removal of the diseased tissue that is in the canal and around the apex and retrofilling that is, retrofilled, uh, retrofilling materials will be used to retrofill the root canal space with biologically inert material. There are various retrofill uh, materials like MTA. 
biodendin, etc. So these materials, bioinert material, will be used to retrofill the root canal space. So these are the basic, basic rationale of antibiotic therapy, which includes non-surgical as well as surgical antibiotic treatment. So that's all. Thank you.